Hi guys, welcome to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Rochelle. In this video, I am back with another reading vlog that I know quite a few of you have been waiting for. In this reading vlog, I will be reading Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bardugo. If you have been following along with my book videos, you know I have been wanting to do this vlog for the longest time and I am finally getting around to it. To give you a little update of where I'm at with the Grishaverse, I read Shadow and Bone, the first book only, and sadly I didn't enjoy it as much as I wanted to because the writing style was very unsettling satisfying to read and I know a bunch of you have recommended me to finish reading a series before I started Six of Crows but I just couldn't bring myself to do it so I am deciding to start this duology before finishing the trilogy. I have heard better reviews of the duology so I am really really hoping that Six of Crows won't be a disappointment to me. I'm actually not sure what to expect from these books or even where the story will go so I am really excited to get reading and take you guys along with me through my reading journey. Oh I can't forget to mention I will be keeping this reading vlog spoiler free but before we get into this video, let me introduce you to Ana Luisa, who is the sponsor of today's video. Thank you, Ana Luisa, for sponsoring this video. Now, I have worked with Ana Luisa in the past, and I am so excited to be partnering with them again because I absolutely love their jewelry, and let me tell you why. My clothing style is usually pretty simple. I never usually wear anything too fancy because I like to dress up my outfit with some jewelry, especially gold jewelry. I'm sure you know gold jewelry can be quite expensive, but Ana Luisa has a wide selection of quality luxury gold jewelry without having those luxury markups. Their designs are also very unique and they will make you feel elegant and at your finest. Something I also really love about Ana Luisa is their approach to sustainable fashion. They have managed to offset 100% of their carbon emissions starting from how they source their raw materials all the way to the disposal of their pieces. Something you should also know about Ana Luisa's jewelry is that they are all hypoallergenic, which is so important to me because I have very sensitive skin. So I am so glad that I do not have to worry about getting an allergic reaction when I wear jewelry from Ana Luisa. They were so, so kind and they sent my way three of their pieces. The first piece I received are these hoop earrings I'm wearing. The name of the style is Sparkle. I think these earrings are so unique because there's little rhinestones on the hoop and then there's also a little dangly chain. I have never seen anything like these before, so I just just had to get it. The second piece I got is this ear cuff. This style is called the Giada. This piece is simple but beautiful. What's absolutely amazing about this piece is that you do not need a piercing to wear it. And last but not least, I also have one of their necklaces. This is the Willow style. I love how simple it is but also how it stands out with any outfit I wear. I think the layered look is very cute. So if you feel like treating yourself to a little something, I will have my link in the description box below. Anna Luisa currently has a Valentine's day sale going on so the entire website is buy one get one 40 percent off that means you can browse their website and get anything you want for yourself or a loved one if you like any of these pieces that i'm currently wearing you can also find them on their website something that's also amazing about anna luisa is that they do ship internationally again thank you anna luisa for sponsoring this video and without further ado let's get into this reading vlog turn off All right, so I am 58 pages into the book and I have some thoughts to share with you guys. Within the first two pages of reading this book, I immediately noticed this and that is the writing in this book is so much better than it was in Shadow and Bone. Like, I actually want to read this book. I mean, with Shadow and Bone, the writing was just so unsatisfying to read that I literally had to force myself to finish it. Something I did not expect though were the chapters to be told from perspectives of different characters. When I first noticed that, I was like, oh, okay. And then I immediately thought that it would be written in the first person, but it's not. It's actually written in the third person, which isn't a bad thing, but it's just a little weird at first. So it's something I definitely have to get used to. Also, Kaz seems like a very interesting character. He knows how to get what he wants from people. And somehow he also knows that there's a traitor within his own crew when no one else does. I'm just very intrigued to see what else this book will reveal about his character. Going into some of the elements and the details of the story, I think it's interesting how amplifiers increase Agricia's power Power, but Jirda Param, I hope I'm saying that correctly, alters Agrisha's perception. Just the fact that the Jirda Param drug can alter Agrisha's power, which could be used as a weapon to alter the materials of the world, to create chaos in the financial markets and collapse the economy. That's kind of crazy, but definitely interesting conflict. A lot of you guys have actually told me to finish reading the Shadow and Bone trilogy before I start the Six of Crows duology, because it would give me a better understanding of the world. But I've got to say, I'm not 
really regretting my choice to not finish Shadow and Bone because I feel like this book explains the world pretty well. For example, it explained what amplifiers were and it also explained the different types of Grisha very well. So at this point right now, I don't feel like I missed out on anything by not reading the trilogy. Also, I'm not sure if this is true or not, but I heard that the Shadow and Bone TV series is basically the trilogy and the duology combined. Maybe it's because I watched the TV show almost a year ago, but I don't really remember what I read so far in this book happening in the show. So I'm a little confused about that, but if you know anything about that and you were able to clear things up for me, let me know in the comments down below. Since I last talked to you guys, I read a little bit more of Six of Crows and I am currently on part two, which is the beginning of chapter seven. I have to admit, I'm definitely enjoying this book a lot more than I thought I would. Going back to the Shadow and Bone TV series, I can kind of see how the trilogy and the duology are blended together through the characters. But in terms of plot, I don't remember anything from this book happening in the show. I should probably watch the first season of the show again at some point because clearly I forgot almost everything about it. Right now, I am so curious to why Kaz wears leather gloves. It just seems like no one has seen him without the gloves. I really hope that this book reveals what Kaz is hiding with the gloves. In the last couple of chapters I read, I was also introduced to Matthias. What did he do to end up in prison? Was it because he was a witch hunter instructed to hunt down the Grisha to face trial and execution? Anyways friends, it is late at night now. I do want to read a little bit more of this book before I go to bed. I'm aiming to at least read a couple of chapters, but we'll see. It's kinda crazy The kinds of things life throws at you I never knew I'd feel so safe in your arms Okay, so I ended up only reading one chapter But I got to the point in the book where they mentioned how Matthias ended up in prison Turns out my guess from earlier was wrong I'm also sensing that there's a complicated relationship between Matthias and Nina It feels like there's a romantic past But it's complicated because Matthias wants to kill Nina Either because she's Grisha or she personally did something to him I don't know which one it is yet, but I feel like those are the two options. All right, friends, it's been a couple days since I last chatted with you guys. I am a little over halfway through the book, so I thought I would pop in to give you guys a little reading update. First of all, I am really liking this dynamic Kaz has with his crew, especially with Jesper and Inej. Kaz is just such a cold and harsh character, but then he's also very sarcastic with his crew, which is quite funny. Now just talking about Kaz and Inej, I definitely feel like there's something a little more than a friendship or what Kaz calls it an investment between himself and Inej. I honestly think Kaz and Inej would make a cute couple. But of course, Kaz being who he is has to go and stop it, whatever it is, before he even begins. Also, I now know a little bit more of the history between Matthias and Nina. And it seems like whatever is between them is kind of toxic, not gonna lie. This chapter that I last read kind of just blew my mind because I just found out that Nina and Matthias didn't even know each other's names before this one moment in the book. Wait, now I'm getting kind of confused. Was that part of flashback? Okay, yeah, it was on page 241 when they first told each other their names. This was definitely in the present day. Yeah, it's just a little weird to me how they have so much history yet they didn't even know each other's names. The last thought I have right now is that as I'm reading this book, I am definitely starting to remember some parts of this story being incorporated into the TV show. It's funny because I remember telling you guys earlier that I don't remember any of these events happening in the show, but I guess it's all just coming back to me at a very slow pace. Oh my god. I'm not gonna give any spoilers, but this book just got to the point where they revealed something so, so big about Jesper. And I am kind of mind blown right now because I did not expect that from his character. I'm just so curious right now, like how did he manage to hide that from everyone his entire life? All right, so I did just read a few more chapters. I really want to continue reading right now, but I do got a bit of score to get done. So sadly, I got to stop reading for now. I'm really going to try reading a little bit more of this book tonight. 
Hi guys, welcome to a new day. I have about an hour to kill before class, so I thought I would use this hour to read a little bit more of Six of Crows. I only have about like a hundred pages left of the book, so my goal is to actually just finish this book today so I could start Crooked Kingdom tomorrow. Where I read up to so far, Inej just made a big decision for her future after this heist they're on is done. I hope you guys know what I'm referring to because I don't want to give spoilers, but it just makes me really sad. All right guys, it is now a little bit later. I went to class and I got some food and I also read a little bit. I now know why Kaz wears those gloves and I also know why he has that limp. That was mentioned on page 401. It is currently 8, 10 p.m. and I have about 50 to 60-ish pages left to read. I definitely feel like I can finish this book tonight. Guys, I did it. I finished Six of Crows today. Oh my god, I did not expect that ending. It was just a very big plot twist. Okay, so right now I thought I'd give you my review on Six of Crows. The first thing I want to talk about is the direction of the story. I definitely feel like the direction of the story was very straightforward. I guess what I'm trying to say is that the plot of the story was very easy to follow. Also, the writing of this book was so much better than it was in Shadow and Bone. In my opinion, in terms of the writing, this book was more of a young adult read than the Shadow and Bone series. Judging by the first book only, I kind of want to say the trilogy was more of a middle grade read. When I first opened this book, what actually surprised me was how each chapter was written from a different perspective. I honestly thought I would get very confused when each chapter switched between a different character perspective, but I actually was not. I actually thought that these perspectives were a really nice addition to the book. It really just gave us a little insight to what each of the main characters were thinking, and I think by being written in five different different perspectives, it was more effective in making you feel for the characters and their backstories. Also, because these five perspectives were written in the third person, I feel like that allows the reader to view each character equally. The last thing I want to talk about is the romance element in this book. The romance never took over the story. Actually, I would say that there was not even a lot of romance in this book, but when it came into the story, it was actually quite natural. In a lot of the fantasy novels that I read recently, the romance played a huge part in the story. So reading this book was kind of like a breath of fresh air. It was just a really nice change for me. On Goodreads, I gave this book a four star rating. I definitely feel like this book was good and I enjoyed reading it, but I wouldn't say it's one of my all time favorite books. That is all I have to say about Six of Crows. It is actually pretty late right now. It is actually 12, 15 a.m. So I'm gonna call it a day and get ready for bed and I will start Crooked Kingdom tomorrow. Hi friends, welcome to a new day. Today is a day I will be starting Crooked Kingdom. Let's just get reading, shall we? But first, I'm gonna take off the sleeve of the book. I never like reading hardcovers with the sleeve on. Look at this, the book is completely red. Just for a moment, I can't put this down. Things are getting crazy, lately I'm in hazy Oh, and I've been praying someone will come and save me The birds are flying south, I'm frozen in my tower Got no way to go from here, so I'll stay All right, so I just finished reading part one of this book That is almost like 70 pages in So far, I don't really have any thoughts about the book yet I guess the only thing I have to say about this book right now Is that it's kind of nice that we now get to read from Wyland's perspective Because in Six of Crows, we never got to I'm gonna take a break from reading right now Just because I need to get some schoolwork done I do want to pick up this book a little bit later today though. Today I got through a pretty good chunk of the book. Something I really like in the book so far is how Bardugo inserts bits of sarcasm into the dialogue to make it comedic. I just find that sarcasm and teasing is always funny, even in real life. Also, I'm really liking the action in this book more than the action in Six of Crows. It just feels a little more exciting for some reason. Maybe it's just having that knowledge of what happened in the first book that's making this book more exhilarating to read. Hi guys, it's been a couple days since I last updated you guys. I am a little over halfway through the book. Before I start reading today, I thought I would share with you guys a couple of my thoughts so far on this book. I'm now coming to the conclusion that this duology takes place after the Shadow and Bone series because it says on page 192 that Alina sacrificed herself to save Ravka and destroy the Shadow Fold. But like what? Is Alina actually dead? And is that something I missed out on by not finishing the trilogy? I'm a little mind blown right now because up until this point, I thought Alina was still alive. 
alive. Let's also talk about Zoya. Usually she's only mentioned, but she finally makes an appearance in this book. I guess I'm kind of glad that I at least read the first book in the Shadow and Bone series because that's where Zoya was introduced. And I did get to know her character a little bit. So when I read about her character in Crooked Kingdom, I'm not completely lost. I have some knowledge of what she can do and who she is, which is definitely a good thing. I've also got to say, I really don't like Wyland's father. He's kind of evil. He kept such a big secret from Wyland for years. If I was Wyland, I would probably be confused, frustrated, and probably not having it. I have one more thought that I absolutely need to share because this line makes me like Kaz a whole lot more. This is what Kaz says to Wyland. You're not weak because you can't read. You're weak because you're afraid of people seeing your weakness. That right there are words of wisdom. Who knew Kaz can be such a wonderful person? Hi friends, it is late at night. I'm probably gonna read one more chapter, maybe two before I go to bed. I'm currently on page 456 of Crooked Kingdom. I believe there's just under 100 pages left to read of this book. My goal is actually to finish this book by the end of the day today. I think I can do it, it's gonna happen. Sunshine. Seems so bright until it's the only source of all your light. Oh, someone's calling, it's not me. Then scream and talk about your death. All right, guys, I need to pop in for a reading update because I am not okay. I'm not gonna explicitly say what happened, but something happened to Matthias. I feel so bad for Nina. Hi! So I finished Crooked Kingdom and it is that point in the video where I share with you my review on the book. The first thing I gotta say is that I like how we get to learn more about the characters and their backstories, especially Wyland because in this book we actually get to read from his perspective now. With the other characters, we also read from their perspective in Six of Crows, but this book takes their backstories further and it dives deeper into their past. And that is something I really, really like because I always love character development in stories. Going back to Wyland's perspective though, I did notice there weren't many chapters chapters written from his perspective. I'm not sure why that is. Maybe there just wasn't much to tell from his point of view. I will say though, those chapters written from Wyland's perspective were pretty long. So I guess that kind of makes up for not having that many chapters written from his point of view. Also, the romance is more present and explicit in this book in comparison to Six of Crows. But the romance still doesn't overpower the story. I feel like the way Lee Bardugo wrote it, it was just a really nice balance, especially considering this book is a young adult read. So there was just enough romance to keep it appropriate for younger readers. Now talking about the action in this book, it was always clear on what the goal was, but personally, the mini goal the crew had in the beginning of the book to rescue Inej, that part of the book was so exciting to read. And then I sort of feel like the story plateaued for me after that. The character building parts were very interesting, but it's the action bits where I felt half interested. I don't know, I just feel like the goal and the objective in this book wasn't as strong as it was in Six of Crows. And that's why the book felt a little bit directionless to me. After the first chunk of the book, it was definitely harder for me to get into the story. And because it was quite difficult for me to continue reading, this book felt a tad bit long and it definitely took longer than expected to read. Overall, I think this duology was a great read. It was enjoyable and I liked reading it. But personally for me, Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom are the type of books that I would enjoy reading in the moment, but they won't be stories I will remember one or two months down the road. I just feel like these stories won't stick with me, unfortunately. I do have to say I enjoyed Six of Crows more than I enjoyed Crooked Kingdom. So on Goodreads, I gave Crooked Kingdom a three star rating. All right, friends, that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed watching my reading journey as I read through Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bardugo. I was kind of nervous about starting this duology, but I'm so glad I read it. I have to say though, those of you who commented great reviews of this duology in my past videos, you guys really did give me motivation to actually pick up this series, so thank you. I don't really know how I feel right now. I guess I kind of feel accomplished and happy that I actually got around to reading this duology because it has been on my TBR for a very long time. Before I go, I want to thank Anna Louisa again for sponsoring this video. Don't forget you can check them out at the link in my description box and you can save with their buy one get one 40% off deal as part of their Valentine's Day sale. And with that, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye! Pull the key out the ignition, running my
mouth, but I never listen. You hold me back, we'll never last. Keep talking all your shit. Wondering how all this started. You left me broken hearted. You flip my words, yeah, this love hurts. Keep talking all your shit.